Hi, this is Coach Stacy with the Susan G. Komen 3-Day, and on behalf of everyone on the Komen 3-Day team, I'd like to thank you for stepping up to volunteer as a training walk leader, and thank you for making the time to review this training. We appreciate your commitment to lead Komen 3-Day training walks in your area. You're such an important part of the 3-Day community. Whether you choose to lead walks once a month or every week, your fellow walkers will be better prepared because of you. I have a lot to cover with you during this session. Uh, first, I'll talk more about the goal of the training walk program. Then we'll discuss how to prepare to lead a training walk, including planning and posting your walk, as well as inviting others to join you. I'll also cover some of the practical information about the day of your training walk, including important safety considerations and precautions specifically pertaining to COVID-19. We'll explore ideas for creative walks and look at the tools that are available once you become an official training walk leader. After you've finished watching this video, we'll share a link to a brief quiz. Our goal is simple with this program. We set it up to provide a supportive environment for walkers to train for the three-day. It gives walkers an opportunity to meet other people in the three-day community and to learn from one another. And as many of our experienced training walk leaders know firsthand, it's a great way to meet new friends and potential teammates. Training walks are a perfect place for walkers to talk about fundraising ideas or discuss any challenges they're facing with other walkers who are in the same position. Training walks are one of the first places where the three-day community starts to develop. So let's look at how we make it happen. I'll use the next few slides to talk about planning for walks, posting them, and inviting others to join you. I'll also review the safety information and the training walk leader resources I mentioned earlier. Planning your walk. We ask all training walk leaders to lead at least one walk per month. You're welcome to do more than that, and most of our training walk leaders do. We ask for this commitment and consistency because we've learned that offering a broad range of training walk choices increases training, helps to build teams, and results in a more meaningful experience for all walkers. Use the 24-week and 16-week training schedules on the training page within your participant center as a guide when planning your distances. Provide loops and shortcuts to meet the needs of walkers at various levels of readiness. And using the training schedules as your guide, plan long back-to-back -back walks as the season progresses. Add hills and varied terrain whenever possible. That way walkers will be ready to conquer any hills that may be part of the three-day route. Remember, it's always important for walkers to hydrate, so please include restroom stops at three to five mile interview intervals and consider designing routes that pass water fountains or shops where walkers can rehydrate when needed. Consider combining your walks with three-day community outreach activities as those opportunities arise in your area. All right, so for most walks, it's important to provide directions or a route map for your training walk participants. Um, if you're just going to lead a short and simple walk where you head out a mile and a half in one direction, then turn around and head back, it's pretty unlikely that anyone will get lost. But as the miles get longer and the routes get more complicated, we want to be sure that nobody in our three-day family gets lost or left behind. Providing directions or a simple map is an easy way to make sure everyone stays safe while walking at different paces and that no one gets lost. There are a lot of great free websites available to use in planning routes and creating maps or route directions. Some examples are mapmywalk.com, gmap-pedometer.com, and rungoapp.com. For now, we'll look at an example from gmap-pedometer.com. You can see it creates a map and calculates your approximate mileage, and it's a pretty quick and easy way to map a route. But remember, this technology isn't always perfect. So please be certain to walk or drive a route that you plan virtually to ensure there's no construction or road closures or any other obstruction that would prove potentially hazardous on a training walk. And keep in mind, there's nothing wrong with simple handwritten directions such as turn left on 14th Avenue by the McDonald's and then go two miles to Main Street and turn right. So actually posting your walk, um, let's look at how to do that on the three-day website. I'm going to show you what it looks like inside your participant center so I can walk you through this step-by-step. -step. Please keep in mind these training walk leader resources will not be available to you just yet. Once you've finished this training, you're going to need to complete the quiz and then sign the training walk leader agreement form. And then you'll have access to the portions of the website that we're about to explore. So once you've logged into your participant center, click on the train link on the right side of the top navigation bar to expand the menu, then click on training walks from the drop-down menu. 
You can also get to it directly by typing in the three day.org forward slash training walks into your browser and logging in. A new page will open where you can click post a training walk. A few things to keep in mind as you're entering your training walk details. When you enter the title of the walk, please include the distance and the location. For instance, five mile walk around Balboa Park, San Diego. These are the first details people will see about your walk and it makes it much easier for them to find an appropriate walk if the title clearly states the distance and the location. Also, it's essential in the description content area to be clear about the where and when. Include where the walk will start and what time people should arrive. Also, please note that the system defaults to posting in central time. So if you are not in central time, you need to pay special attention. Please be specific if the location is a large place like a mall or a park, pick a sign or a store to meet in front of. You can also suggest items to bring like a sunscreen or like sunscreen or a hat if you'll be walking a route that's not shaded um, and remind your walkers to bring a refillable water bottle. To make it easier on yourself, it's a good idea to have a standard paragraph of reminders stored in a Word document on your com computer that you can easily copy and paste into each walk that you post. If you've chosen a terrain other than a standard sidewalk, please include that information as well. For instance, if you're walking on an unpaved trail or a route that includes a lot of stairs or along the beach, include that information so the participants have a heads up and can plan. It's worth reminding participants that these walks are intended for everyone, so walker speeds will vary. Everyone should feel comfortable coming out to join a training walk that's posted on our calendar. If you've got a link from a mapping website, you can include that here as well. And you can also post reminders such as no cell phone use while walking, pets and strollers must stage themselves at the back of the group, etc. Once your walk details are entered and submitted, you'll receive an email thanking you for submitting the walk. It will include a link to your Training Walk Leader Center. Each training walk you create will have its own separate event listing. So when you click Manage My Training Walks, you'll see a list of all of your events and you can access them individually here. You can click on an event to see the names and email addresses of people who, has, who have RSVP'd for your walk. And it's important to note that as people RSVP for your walks, they're going to automatically be added as contacts to your three-day address book in your participant center. So when you're sending out fundraising emails and you see contact listings that don't belong to your donors or your friends and family, you'll understand how they got there. If you need to change the details of your posting, you can do that by clicking on the event page and then edit event web page. If you need to cancel your walk, though, please call a coach at 800-996-3DAY. If you click on the email center tab, you'll see some training walk message templates ready and waiting for you to send. If details about the walk change, for instance, if weather is a factor, you'll want to inform people about the change and you can email them from here. If you change major information about the walk, such as the date, time, or location, an email will automatically go out to everyone who has RSVP'd for that training walk. Once your walk is posted, everyone who visits the training walk search page on the three-day website will be able to see it and RSVP online. But you can go a step further by directly inviting people to join you. Here are some ways to increase attendance for your upcoming walks. Post a link to your training walk on social media in the appropriate three-day Facebook group. Email people directly through your three-day training walk leader center. Use the three-day friend finder to identify other nearby participants to invite to your walk. You'll find the friend finder tool under the connect menu in your participant center. Remember that you do need to opt into the three-day friend finder in order to appear in the search results as a training walk leader and in order to access the other listings there. To opt in under my profile, select additional information and email subscriptions, then check, I am willing to share my contact information with other participants. The three-day friend finder will allow you to download a list of up to 25 individuals within the zip code range that you specify. For a list even larger than that, please contact a three-day coach. All right, on the day of your training walk, um, please plan to arrive early, please bring your RSVP list from the website to use as a sign-in sheet. Participants who are not registered for the three-day will have to read and sign a training walk waiver that you have downloaded and printed in advance. It's a good idea to print several copies and keep them with you so you can distribute them if needed on the day of your walk. 
And before you start walking, distribute your turn by turn directions or maps so that walkers can carry it with them. If the route is simple and doesn't require a map or directions, just take a moment to get everyone's attention, explain the route and confirm they all understand where you're going. Before you start walking, particularly if you have a large group, you'll want to designate someone to bring up the rear and be what we call the caboose. It's inevitable that walker speeds will vary and you don't want anyone to be left behind. Always take a few minutes to stretch before you set out on your walk. In fact, stretching is important before, during, and after your walk. There are suggested stretching exercises in the training topics at the 3 dayorg forward slash training. Please model good behavior and lead your training walk attendees in a stretching session and encourage them to stretch on their own. Before heading out, make sure everyone has a water bottle. If you're concerned about someone's safety, especially if it's a hot day, you do have the right to ask them not to join if they're not properly prepared. Um, no one wants to do this. So this is also where setting expectations in your initial training walk post can be incredibly helpful so that everyone who comes to your walk is adequately prepared. This leads us to our next topic, safety on training walks. Safety is our number one priority on the three day. Every per person participating in the training walk must listen to, understand, and adhere to the rules the training walk leader will go through before the walk begins. These principles of safety are in place to protect our walkers and to prevent accidents. On the walks, it's also critical that every participant remain alert at all times. The three-day safety rules are listed here and they're available among the training walk leader resources on the three-day website. And importantly, they appear for review every time someone RSVPs for a training walk. So it's essential we use the same rules during our training that we will use on our events. So please remind participants that these rules are for their own safety. Regarding COVID-19, we're counting on you to be informed on the latest CDC guidelines and your state and local laws regarding best practices for safe and healthy gatherings and mask usage. Please follow these guys guidelines on all training walks and communicate them to the attendees at the beginning of the walk. Health and safety, if you are experiencing any symptoms of COVID-19, are quarantined due to COVID-19, or may have been exposed, do not attend the training walk. Symptoms may include fever, chills, cough, shortness of breath, or difficulty breathing, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headache, a new loss of taste or smell, sore throat, congestion, or runny nose, nausea, or vomiting. No use of cell phones while walking. Walkers are welcome to carry these with them. In fact, we encourage it. But if they're going to use a cell phone to make a call, send a text, shoot a video or whatever, we ask that they step to the side of the route, stand still until they're done, and then they can rejoin the walk. Share the trail. Most of the routes we train on are public facilities used by many others. So please reinforce the importance of sharing the trail, which means leaving adequate room for people to pass by walking no more than two across. And sometimes it may mean walking single file. Always obey traffic laws. During training is the time to form good habits since we'll follow these same rules on the event. No headphones. Simply put, wearing headphones or earbuds is a distraction. It may not seem like a big deal, but we've seen walkers walk right into light poles or trip over very obviously uneven sidewalks. So it's critical that we as training walk leaders and our participants are paying attention. Regarding music on training walks, um, while the use of headphones is prohibited, you may choose to play music during your training walks via speakers. If someone finds the music distracting, please respect their wishes and either turn the volume down or off completely. And please be respectful of any neighborhoods you may be walking through, especially early in the morning. Children and minors, including uh, minors and baby strollers, um, all minors under the age of 18 must be accompanied by a parent or guardian at all times. The adult guardian must sign the training walk waiver once for themselves and once for the minor. Walkers pushing strollers should walk at the back of the group to avoid congestion. Pets. Um, any pets uh, attending a training walk must be on a leash and also walked at the back of the group. Giving a safety speech is an essential part of your routine before starting any training walks. You'll find a sample of a safety speech with the training walk leader resources in your training walk leader center. I know many training walk leaders who simply write it on an index card that they take to all of their walks so they have it on them and they don't miss anything. 
a little bit more about training walk safety. Um, of course, we all know that no matter how hard we try to prevent them, accidents do happen and they can happen on your training walks. I don't say that to scare you. Instead, I want you to know the importance of being prepared. If there is an accident or injury on your walk, please call 911 first. We trust you to use your, use your judgment here. Obviously, you don't need to call 911 for someone who scrapes their knee, but if someone falls and can't walk on an injured ankle, if someone is nauseous or showing, showing other signs of dehydration, please make the call. After the walk, follow up and let a three-day coach know. Of course, not all injuries are, are as obvious as a broken bone or sprained ankle. Dehydration and hyponatremia, which is the loss of sodium, are the causes of the most severe medical cases seen on the three-day. Both of these conditions are easily preventable. On the event, walkers are encouraged to drink, drink a bottle of water and a bottle of sports drink between each pit stop every three to five miles. So please encourage walkers to start this during their training, drinking before, during, and after all of their training walks, even short ones, and regardless of the weather. As a training walk leader, it's important that you be knowledgeable about proper hydration and nutrition. And you can find excellent information about these topics at the three-day.org forward slash training. Be sure your attendees provide in case of emergency information on the sign-in sheet and encourage them to carry it with them while walking. It may be a card in their fanny pack or an ID bracelet. Others may program an in case of emergency contact into their cell phone. And you may wanna share your cell phone number with your training walk attendees in well, as well in case they need to get in contact with you during the walk. Empower your attendees to take care of each other. If they see an accident or have a concern, have them let you know or have them call 911 if needed. Observe your walkers along the route. Sometimes our training walk leaders are some of the fastest walkers. And if that's the case, we would recommend that you start out at the back of the pack and work your way forward or take longer breaks along the route and let the people in the back catch up. Oftentimes the walkers at the back of the pack are the walkers that need extra support. Being a training walk leader doesn't always mean being in the front. And if you have other experienced walkers on your training walk, spread them out throughout the group and have them be your eyes and ears. If you're concerned about someone, ask them to stop and rest and be willing to stay with them if needed. We'd never leave a walker behind on the three-day route, so we don't want that to happen during training either. While it's really important to be safe, it's equally important to have fun on your training walks. We have lots of training miles to get in. Put your personality into it and make them fun. Designate a theme, wear a crazy costume if you choose, walk through the botanical gardens or the zoo, use games like scavenger hunts to help pass the time. The walks where attendees have fun are the ones they will return to week after week. And we wanna see what you're up to. Be sure to upload photos of your training walks to social media using hashtag the three day. All right, we're nearing the end of this training, but before I wrap up, I wanna highlight just a few important tools. Here's a snapshot of the 24 week training schedule. The 24 week and 16 week training schedules are available on the training page of your participant center. Use these to help you decide the mileage for your training walks. There are many resources in your training walk leader center on the three day website, including safety information and the sample safety speech, as well as tips for planning, posting and boosting attendance at your training walks. There's also a library of training topics available to all participants at the three day.org forward slash training. The training, the, the three day Facebook groups are another place for you to post your training walks. Spread the word and engage the community by letting others know about walks you've scheduled. But please make sure that you read and follow the group rules before posting. And last but certainly not least, your three day coaches are here to help and troubleshoot any concerns. After you finish watching this video, you'll be able to complete the next steps to become an official training walk leader. First, complete the brief training walk leader quiz. Once that's done, you'll receive a link to complete the training walk leader agreement form. And once that's submitted, you'll be able to start posting walks. If you're new at this, we'd recommend attending someone else's training walks before posting your own to get a feel for th how things go. Or use the three-day friend finder or Facebook groups to find and ask an experienced training walk leader to lead a walk with you. Pairing up can be a great way to go. The Facebook groups are also a perfect place to share tips with other training walk leaders. Now get the word out to the rest of your three-day friends. We would love to have more official training walk leaders than ever this year. It's such an important way that we can support our walkers and build the three-day community. 
Okay, we did it. We finished our training. Thank you again for playing such an important role in preparing walkers for the event. We're so very grateful for your time and leadership and sincerely appreciate all that you're doing. Next, please complete the training walk leader quiz by clicking on the link provided at the end of this video or by going to the three day.org forward slash TWL quiz. Thank you.